here on EWTN Pro-Life Weekly, we bring the pro-life activity on Capitol Hill to our viewers at home. To better find out what pro-life lawmakers are focused on now, we're joined by a member of the bipartisan Congressional Pro-Life Caucus, Representative Jeff Fortenberry of Nebraska. Congressman, thank you for your time. You're welcome, Catherine. Always a pleasure to talk to you. The Pro-Life Caucus is bipartisan, Congressman, but the chair of the Democratic National Committee recently made a strong statement saying all Democrat candidates need to be for abortion. How do you go about dialoguing about abortion and life issues in this divided political climate with lawmakers who disagree with you? Well, I think it's very sad that the Democrat Party now has an abortion litmus test, if you will. And uh, I actually had a dialogue with a close friend of mine who is the member of the Democrat Party here, Congressman, and he lamented that. So I think it's up to members of the Democrat tradition who have accepted the premise that all life is worthy of being protected, that it is a fundamental principle of justice and a fundamental principle of compassion that we create the type of society where we have an ecosystem where everyone is welcome, no one is thrown away, nor anything thrown away. And earlier this year, you, along with Representative Diane Black, introduced the Conscience Protection Act into the House. Why is this a priority for you, and is conscience protection something pro-lifers need to be paying attention to? Absolutely, pro, the pro-life community needs to develop a depth of understanding of what this means. It's a little bit of a foreign vocabulary, if, if you will, to say conscience protection. But really, this is the sacred space of the person, the place where a person makes a prudential judgment based upon what they may know to be right through reason, but they apply that reason with compassion, with heart, in application in a particular circumstance. We were able to introduce the idea into the political vocabulary of conscious protections because of the aggressive assault on the dignity of human rights, the dignity of freedom of conscience, the dignity, therefore, of religious liberty and other things that flow from conscience. During the health care debate, our last health care construct, the Affordable Care Act, sometimes called Obamacare, actually set up the mechanism by which the government was going to tell people how they must conduct themselves in pursuing their own health care needs. This resulted in a court case, several, Hobby Lobby being one, but the Little Sisters of the Poor as well, going before the United States Supreme Court to try to fight for their right to conscience and religious liberty. So it's very important that the pro-life community uh, readily understand how the, this nuance of assault on the dignity of personhood is occurring, particularly in the health care debate. Congressman, in case our viewers do not know, you are a practicing Catholic. Does your Catholic faith shape your approach to the life issue, and if so, how? Well, I, I believe being pro-life is a matter, again, of justice, a matter of compassion. Uh, it's simply the right thing to do, and of course, my faith strengthens that principle, and I think helps form my conscience, to, particularly to the needs of the most vulnerable, as well as the poor. Um, the fact that Catholic means universal, if you will. And so in the political realm, of course, we try to talk in universal language that might have an appeal to the mind and heart of someone who might not share our great tradition, but nonetheless has an open heart to these transcendent ideals, this gift of the intellect as it can strive for an understanding of justice, an understanding of life, an understanding of the beauty and dignity of truth, and embrace those concepts. So. I, 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 again, it's an affirmation of this universal desire that's in all persons' heart, being Catholic, to try to not only invite others to understand the depth of the gift that we've been given of reason, but to exercise it in compassion for those who are least among us. Congressman, you also focus a lot on persecuted Christians in the Middle East. Would you say that work goes hand in hand with being a Catholic pro-lifer and defending the unborn? I'm interested to hear how you view the pro-life issue in a greater, more holistic lens. Well, I think that's a great question because obviously uh, we care deeply about the unborn child. We want women to be saved from the scourge of abortion. We want to set up a community that reacts with compassion, no matter how hard the circumstances, so that persons know they are cared for and there will be a commitment to them both before our life is born and afterward, and this is essential. But this principle extends beyond just the, 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 the debate that we have about being pro-life or pro-choice. 
It extends into what we call the holistic ecosystem. We're back to this idea that no person, no thing should be thrown away. And when you have a, a death cult like ISIS in the Middle East that has used a, a twisted form of religion to justify genocide against Christians and Yazidis uh, and other religious minorities, it's not only a, a, an assault on human dignity and religious freedom, it's an assault on the principles of civilization itself. So again, the larger view of protecting life, creating the conditions in which communities can flourish, creating the conditions in which persons can exercise their conscience as it exists, as it's manifest in religious freedom, particularly persons who carry forward in time the ancient faith tradition which we possess. So I believe what we have at stake here is not only humanitarian issues, the principles of justice, but the principles of civilization itself. Universals that we should, any person of goodwill, any person of reason should be able to embrace. And I think that's a broader view of what it means to be pro-life. Representative Jeff Fortenberry of Nebraska, thank you for your time. A pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much.